Metro police tonight say it was something right out of a Cheech and Chong movie. They're posting on Facebook what they found when they pulled over former U of L basketball player Shane Bahannon over the weekend. A stolen AR-15 rifle and an AK-47. Police say marijuana smoke was pouring out of the windows. Shane Javier Bahannon, born September 24th, 1992. In his own words, the former projected NBA draft pick knows he flushed his NBA opportunity down the drain. It's the thing about hindsight. Everything becomes clear. To a point, you see where you went wrong and how simple a change you could have made that would have changed your entire family's lives for generations. Another thing hindsight does is it doesn't forgive you. You know why? Because there's too many of yous. Too many that life and sports has to filter out the ones who don't get it. Too many of yous that you should have learned from the yous before you and not let their results of a bad decision become, well, you. Everyone plays basketball. I mean, everyone. You see your favorite player get drafted and his suit is dancing in diamonds or cut like he's ready for a Rock Nation brunch as social media makes them seem like real life superheroes. You want that. Why wouldn't anyone? You think if Steve Ballmer could run and jump like LeBron, he wouldn't trade his billions for LeBron's and a chance to be a legendary figure in a sport he loves? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Bro, I'm out, man. That nigga's tripping. But the majority of kids don't quite understand all that goes into having that life. I know I said hindsight doesn't forgive before, and that may have been a harsh way to drive home a point because it has in the past. Ask Sweet Pea. Ask John Lucas. You may not be so lucky. Shane Bahannon is now a what-if story when he could have been for Louisville what Montrez Harrell became and who knows, maybe even what Montrez is now, which is a valuable piece on an NBA team fighting for a $100 million deal. Instead, he's overseas, over the hill of his NBA potential, underpaid because he does have tremendous skill, and overlooked, all because of an addiction he just couldn't curb and more. Here are three reasons his growth was stunted, and what made him feel his opportunity as an NBA player is now gone. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. Shane Bahannon is a 6'6 power forward born in Cincinnati, Ohio, that used basketball to avoid all distractions surrounding his childhood. As a person, his grandmother remembered him as a child that understood right from wrong and did everything to make sure what happened to his brother didn't happen to him. Because of this, and also a house fire that destroyed his home, he moved to Bowling Green, Kentucky before his junior year and became a star on the basketball floor. Although he is an undersized power forward relative to the NBA level, that could be another stunt in his growth literally. He did have the athleticism and ball handling to be an open court threat and mid-range asset. By his senior year, he was the top 20 recruit, number one in Kentucky, and a McDonald's and Parade All-American. With the right moves made thereafter, he could have easily been an NBA draft pick. Stunt number one, self-management and lack of guidance. I credit John Lucas for illuminating this growth stunt and champion his sentiments of shame. But even further, I'd like to drive home the reason I do videos like this. Hindsight also taught me exactly how the politics of basketball and the journey through it works. If I can help another young man heading down the path of today's feature, no amount of praise can trump that. One idea I like to put out there for them is understanding who you are and never forgetting that person because it can be so easy to lose that. For me, it was being in a whole new country with no more rules, tons of freedom and forgetting who I was. For a guy like Shane, choosing the wrong crowd, buying into the praise he got as a Louisville basketball celebrity, and also forgetting the kid he was that strayed away from the noise in the hood to focus on a better life. No 15 minute smoke session should have jeopardized that. Again, in hindsight. 
a person around him that knows that like I do is something he needed. Instead, he clinged to the misfits and drifters locally and it led him to failing multiple drug tests at Louisville, being suspended over and over, and lack of progressive production at a school where he could have been a shoe-in as an NBA draft pick. This is where guidance is so important. This is where strong men, to you I say, please stay in these kids' lives. They need your wisdom from what you've seen before them to guide them instead of chancing them hitting their target in the dark. To the player, I say, that strong, experienced figure to guide you is not promise. I had both parents, but none of them played or understood the basketball journey I was on to help. So you have to take accountability and seek out the successes and failures that took the path before you and plan around that for yourself. Self-manage, because at the end of the day, no one owes you that. Born alone, die even lonelier. But Hannon chose Louisville after his All-American high school career and showed immediate promise and averaged 9 points and 7.5 and rebounds in just 26 minutes. He decided to return to school and played even better in spurts like averaging almost 13 points and 11 rebounds in the Final Four that year, being named to the All-Final Four team. Oh yeah, and they won the national championship. He had 15 points and 12 rebounds in that game, even though it was vacated by the NCAA. Guidance. It could have told him to enter the draft at that point. He came back to school for a junior season. Stunt number two, better off at a smaller school. With all that said, Shane Bahannon may have been better off at a smaller school than Louisville at the end of the day. As he remembers Louisville, it was like you were already an NBA player as soon as you stepped on campus and sometimes before. Walking from class to class, signing autographs, unlimited amount of friends, always a party you were invited to, any and all the females you want that your eyes could see, and of course, drugs all of your choice. Shane was suspended prior to his junior season for violating team rules, which later has come out and he himself admits was for smoking weed. According to him, he smoked weed one block away from the team's hotel the night they won the national championship and felt untouchable. He met a few guys locally who clinged to Shane as his friend and supplied him with weed on call until he was clearly addicted and now had it coming between him and his goals. He was reinstated and 12 games later he was caught again. The school advised Coach Patino, who fought countless times for Shane, to dismiss him from the team and he did. At a smaller school, Shane could have focused more on basketball, and with him being a smaller player for his projected position, he could have dominated at a smaller, less celebrated school. Instead, the glamour that comes with being a Louisville player trapped him in that moment to where he couldn't see or realize his future. Stunt number three, blown opportunities. Now, a decision had to be made. Go to Colorado State, finish your degree hours, repair your image, put up numbers, or declare for the NBA draft with all your baggage and no closure to a rocky college career. Spoiling what you already know, he chose the latter and went undrafted in the 2014 NBA draft. Months before that, he was cited by Louisville police for marijuana. Two blown opportunities in one. Not only did you attempt a near impossible feat of underperforming at Louisville, being suspended over and over for the same offense, dismissed from the school, and caught again with weed, he shunned the life raft Colorado State was and all but blew those NBA chances away. But he still had a few left. He was taken in the D-League draft by the Rockets affiliate minor league team where he was waived months later for lack of production. He decided to go overseas after turning down a second D-League opportunity with Sacramento's minor league team. He's played overseas ever since, but the problems didn't stop. Arrests for skipping child support court, arrests for possession of an AK-47 that was stolen and other artillery, along with ounces of weed. 
a far cry from what even he saw himself becoming. All in all, stories like Shane's are ones you never want to hear because you understand there's no getting those moments back for these guys. He really had a shot and smoked it, literally. He's still getting to play basketball for a living and that should be another lesson to players that it's not all bad and it's not all over. But man, what an opportunity he had, flushed down the drain. Salute to him, I wish him nothing but the best, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC, Stunted Growth, and I'm out.